When evaluating how good a card or play is in a card game, the two main factors you want to look at are how much tempo and card advantage it gains you. I already have a separate video up on tempo, which I recommend checking out if you enjoy this video, but for now, let's focus on card advantage. In this video, I'll be covering what card advantage is, explaining how the math to calculate it works, and go over why it is so important to winning games. So, what is card advantage? To understand this, we first have to take a look at what card economy is. This describes, simply put, how many cards you have in play and in your hand. If, for example, you have three islands and a tempest gin in play, and two cards in your hand, your current count of cards is six. Card economy starts with the number of cards in your opening hand, which will vary depending on mulligans and if you're playing first or second, and will increase and decrease over the course of a game. When you or your opponent make a play that results in you either gaining more cards or losing less cards than your opponent, you've gained card advantage. The most basic form of card advantage is the card you draw at the beginning of your turn. It is what we like to call a plus one, a term you might have heard thrown around a lot in magic theory. Basically, you take a look at how many cards you gained in the situation, in this case one, and subtract how many you lost, in this case zero, making it a plus one, meaning you gained a card advantage of one card. To be able to do this math properly, you have to understand that playing a card costs not only mana, but also the card itself. For example, Chaplain's Blessing is a minus one since it costs you one card but does not affect the hand or cards on board of either player. You might be tempted to think that Divination is plus two because it draws you two cards, but remember, you are spending the Divination itself from your hand to draw those two cards, making it a plus one. This math also takes into account the amount of cards your opponent is losing. If you look at Davriel's Shadowfuge, I'm spending one card to make my opponent lose two. I'm losing one card less, making it a plus one for me. In reverse, if I use two lightning strikes to kill my opponent's Baneslayer Angel, I'm minus one since I spent two cards and my opponent only lost one. While we would like to go plus as much as we can, most cards we play in our deck tend to be net neutral in terms of card advantage. Lands are a neutral play since they go minus one card in hand, but plus one card on board. Most removal is also a neutral play since it trades one card in your hand for a card on your opponent's board. The board and hand aren't the only zones to take into consideration here. Let's say I cast a Tormenting Voice. This is usually a net neutral play, since I spend the voice and discard a card to gain two cards. However, if I discard a Think Twice, due to its flashback ability, I gain an additional card I can cast from my graveyard, making the whole exchange a plus one for me. Where this math gets more interesting is when you consider how good the cards themselves actually are. Let's say, it's late in the game, both players have six lands in play. One player has seven cards in hand, which are all basic lands. The other player has only 3 cards in hand, but they are all creatures. Even though the player with 7 cards in hand technically has 4 more cards than his opponent, we would still consider the player with 3 creatures in hand to be at the card advantage, since he has 3 cards that are actually useful while his opponent has none. In a similar vein, a 4-4 creature on board is more valuable than a 2-2 creature on board, meaning if you spend a card on a 4-4 and your opponent spends a card on a 2-2, you are at a card advantage since your card is more valuable. This type of advantage can't really be gauged by numbers like the previous examples. The only real way you'll be able to consistently recognize it is by playing a lot and playing mindfully. At some point, it will become second nature to you and you'll be evaluating your plays by card advantage without even realizing. This is why long-time players can usually very quickly judge if a card or play is good or bad out of gut feeling, because they're used to thinking beyond simple math and recognize nuances that someone with less experience will miss. While all of this is nice to know, why should you care about card advantage? What makes it so important? Well, the more cards you have, the more options you have. 4 lands in play gives you more options for what spells you can cast than 3 lands in play. Having 3 spells in hand represents more options to cast than 2 spells in hand. If you have a creature in play, it gives you the options of attacking and blocking. A Jace the Mind Sculptor in play gives you 3 to 4 different options to use each turn. This is why a card like Cryptic Command is strong. Options are really good. In a card game, the player with more options will almost always win, because they can attack and answer from more different angles. If an aggro deck wins, it is usually because it had the option to attack more often than its opponent had the option to defend himself. If a control deck wins, it is usually because it got into a position where it had enough options to handle anything the opponent could possibly try to do. But if options are so good and card advantage gives us more options, why don't we just cram our deck full of cards that generate card advantage? This is because cards that give us card advantage are usually counterbalanced by a higher mana cost, meaning if you try to play too many, your deck will end up being too slow. Counterspell is almost always a better card than Dismiss, despite Dismiss being a plus one, because this effect is just way more powerful when cast for 2 mana. 
my opponent is trying to smash my face with Tarmogoyf on turn 2, I'd much rather have a counter spell to deal with it immediately, because I'll likely be dead by the time I have the mana to cast Dismiss. Card advantage is only valuable if you have the time to use it. This is why control decks are usually a split between card advantage and mana efficient answers, since this lets them prolong the game and then have the time to capitalize on the card advantage they build for themselves. Okay, so let's summarize. Card advantage is gained when you either gain more cards than your opponent or lose less cards than them. It is calculated by adding the difference of how many cards you gained and lost to the difference of how many cards your opponent lost and gained. Card advantage is good because it gives you more options, making you more likely to win. As I previously stated, a lot of the specifics of card advantage are very nuanced and can only really be recognized if you train yourself to look out for them. So, after you're done watching this video, go play some magic and try to pay close attention to each player's card economy. Be sure to check out my other theory videos to further improve your gameplay. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe or share with a friend, it helps out a ton. With all that being said, thanks for watching. This is Lake Kakashi, signing out. Swag on the beat, bitch.